Jerusalem getting ready for this very special project called Humans of Jerusalem. We're going to go around Jerusalem and interview people. We're going to take their pictures, we're going to talk to them, and we're going to ask them about their stories and their everyday lives. Our project is based on a poem by Yehuda Amhai, which is called Taurus. It's about not just getting to know the history and the sites of Israel, but also the people that live there and how they go on every day in life. We're really excited to get out of our tri-bubble and experience new things, have conversations with people, interact with them, and get to know their stories. Okay, I'm from Eritrea. It's Eritrea. Uh, before two, 23 years ago, it was one country with uh, Ethiopia, and then now it's two countries, and come from there. I was in uh, Ethiopia for years, one year, one year, and then I go to Sudan. In Sudan, I was Sudan. I was two two days in Sudan. From there, I go to Egypt for for a week, and then from Egypt, I go to Israel. I say interview to Ame. It was really interesting learning about his past and where he came from. He came from Eritrea, which to me, I haven't really heard about that place, but it was really interesting learning about it. Personally, I love sports, so hearing that he wants to be a professional soccer player really stood out for me. He said that even though he's not himself Jewish and he's not um, a citizen even, he still feels very connected to the culture and to the land. And he said that it doesn't matter what you are really, as long as like you're a good person and you're here, that's all that matters to him. And that's, he feels like really part of the country. interviewed um, Susan Silverman, who is a rabbi and who lives in Jerusalem. She made Aliyah about 10 years ago, and she has I think, five children. And she's also famous because her sister is Sarah Silverman, a comedian. She's very active in Women of the Wall, and it was really very cool, very interesting to hear from her and about all her opinions about Israel and politics and religion. It was great. In 2005, we're in the process of, um, of having, getting our fifth child, so, so uh, adopting him from Ethiopia. And we realized that when we had five kids, we were gonna need to have a much calmer life, especially because he was already four, four and a half years old, and we thought, we need to like integrate our family. So we decided we're gonna go for two years and live on a kibbutz. And my husband was connected to Kibbutz Keturah in the south, an amazing place. Um, I do sometimes feel looked down on because I've had people say unkind things to me because of being a progressive Jew. Um, but that's that, that's what it is, you know. It is what Anywhere. it is. He gave me a new perspective on a lot of left-wing parties and uh, liberal Judaism, and she believes that we all need to be united and together. It was a new message that I learned. I met Yosef, my now husband, in the anti-apartheid movement at BU. And he had all the same liberal values I did, but he had these ways of thinking about them that were eternal, right? So while I was like, racism is bad, he would say like, he believes in Salam Elohim. He believes that, that everyone is made yeah. in the image of God. Yeah. And I was like, wow, like I would like to teach my kids one day about Salam Elohim, about Sedek, justice, about, um, about Shalom, you know, about these eternal values, and then they can draw on those to do their work in the world. very sweet lady. Her name is Tilly. She's from Holland and she moved here in Elia in 1949. And we walked in and she was very welcoming, very friendly, and we sat down and we got to ask her about her life. I wanted to, to go away. I had a bad time in Holland. 
I remember still we, as my father always spoke about Israel. And always there was something about we know Palestine then. And uh, when I came back after the war, I didn't want to stay there. And the whole family not, whatever came back. And we decided to go here. And then it was the, the war here. So we, just after the war, we decided to leave Holland and make a new life here. I had a friend and she was with me the whole time in the war. And if she wasn't there, I wouldn't be there. She was helping me with everything. But she stayed in Holland and in the meantime she died. She she started out by saying that it was it was hard for her when she first came to Israel. It was hard getting used to how it is here. But since then, it's it's clear that she really really loves Israel, especially Jerusalem. I love Jerusalem. I enjoy to go in the streets. I see the people. I see how nice buildings they are. They are building, and I see the what is changed. Like I came here, and now. It is a big city. And I wanted to kind of capture her lifestyle because I noticed that she was with lots. She had lots of flowers in her home, and she had lots of like very warm, like things in her home. Which and I think the way someone decorates their home like kind of says a lot about them. So I tried to get as much as I could in there with her in it. In my house, we only listen to like Yemenite music, Israeli music, no Beatles, not, you know, <laughs> nothing. And I was singing my whole life. We're doing it like our grandparents did, like singing around the tables and like something more traditional. But we're bringing ourselves because um, it's, um, it's something of boys. The, the men did that. And now we're women coming and singing and it's like something new. It's a revolution. 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 There is truth here because of the spirituality. It, it's amazing. I can't live anywhere else. She tried. Yeah, she I tried. Try. I really tried. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I discovered that when I, when I do music, I'm in the most whole and spiritual <laughs> place that I can be. Yeah, it was really interesting because, you know, one of them comes from like, well, they both come from a more religious background, but one of them is more religious and one of them is more secular. And it was interesting to hear how like music inspired not only their religion, but also their like uh, spirituality. We started talking to one of the guys that sells bagels there and he told us he's a Palestinian Christian. Something that he did talk about is how at the end of the day like we're all we're all human beings and it shouldn't matter what border you're born on and what country you're coming from, but that we're all citizens and that we should all have the same rights as one another. I was born in Jerusalem, the old city. The walls can, if they speak, they will tell you who I am. I grew up here. What would the walls tell us? The life was much better. People more friendly, loving, no fear, you know, uh, helping each other. The money is to use it. It was not uh, object, you know. So this is what tells you. Peace, you know. It doesn't matter where are you from, Jewish, Arabic, you know. You are hungry, I give you a piece of bread to eat. I have no problem. Because we're all human beings. Today was such an eye-opening experience because we really get out to meet random people. For example, we met a man who was convinced by a rabbi and his friend to become religious and an older married couple who made Aliyah simply because they wanted to vote and have a say in the matters of Israel. And a violinist who had been playing for 22 years 
and now suddenly she sings in the, and plays violin on the streets to unite people with her music. I would like to think that the lesson we can take from this experience would be to go up to someone that we've never met before, say hi, talk to them, or even just smile because you don't know what it can do to change their life. You can really influence someone by how you act in public and I think it's a good idea for everyone to be nice in the world. Thank you.